what will happen patient can develop short bowel syndrome so short bowel syndrome it is caused by massive resection of small bowel it is caused by massive resection massive resection of small bowel clear so first question what is the normal length of small intestine the normal length of small intestine is 600 cm how much is the normal length of large intestine that is 150 cm so see what's the normal length normal length so normal length of small intestine and large intestine you have to remember small intestine it is 600 cm and large intestine that is 150 cm clear so in which patients we are going to label that this patient is having short bowel syndrome whenever the length of small intestine is less than 200 cm it means patient is having short bowel syndrome so sbs in short bowel syndrome how much is the length of small intestine the length of small intestine it is less than 200 cm all these are the questions so you have to remember the length in short bowel syndrome the length of small intestine is less than 200 cm so any condition where we go for massive resection of small bowel that can cause short bowel syndrome and you know in mesenteric ischemia massive resection of small bowel is done why because sometimes even the whole midgut is ischemic and it is gangrenous so you have to resect it even if there is mesenteric trauma there is massive part of small bowel it might be ischemic and gangrenous same thing happens with midgut valvulus what happens in crohn's disease during the entire life span a patient of crohn's disease requires on an average 3 to 5 surgeries so there also we perform resection and anastomosis so in all these cases massive resection is done and it can cause what all these cases can cause short bowel syndrome another important point if you are going to compare jejunum and ileum ileum is having better adaptability than jejunum ileum can adapt the functions of jejunum so you tell me which resections are better tolerated ileal resections or jejunal resections obviously jejunal resections since ileum can adapt the function of jejunum so what jejunal resections are better tolerated first important point jejunal resections are better tolerated why jejunal resections are better tolerated these are better tolerated why because of better adaptability of ileum why because of better adaptability of ileum better adaptability of ileum clear second see what are the functions of terminal ileum you can see this diagram so this is ileum this is the cecum and this is the appendix this is the terminal ileum one of the unique function of terminal ileum this is b12 absorption b12 absorption the second unique function what there is enterohepatic circulation of bile salt so there is enterohepatic circulation of bile acid or bile salt clear imagine any patient in whom you are going to resect the terminal ileum now there is no b12 absorption so these patients are going to develop which type of anemia megaloblastic anemia suppose there is no enterohepatic circulation of bile salt so what will happen the unabsorbed bile salt enter into the colon so there is deficiency of bile salt and because of this deficiency of bile salt patient is prone to develop with stone cholesterol gallstone unabsorbed bile salt it enters into colon because of this it is going to irritate the colon and patient is having watery diarrhea what is the name of this diarrhea this is cholelytic diarrhea so see the manifestations of short bowel syndrome first because of impaired absorption of b12 patient is going to develop megaloblastic anemia megaloblastic anemia second because of impaired enterohepatic circulation patient is going to de develop cholesterol gallstone so what there is development of cholesterol development of cholesterol gallstone third unabsorbed bile salts are going to irritate the colon leading to watery diarrhea so what these patients are having cholelytic diarrhea these patients are going to develop cholelytic diarrhea clear 
Second, you know that jejunum is having finger-like projections, these are villi, and this helps in absorption of nutrients. Any patient in whom there is resection of jejunum, so what will happen? There is no absorption because there is loss of absorptive surface. So what will happen? Malabsorption. Because of loss of absorptive surface, what will happen? There is malabsorption. And if there is malabsorption, what happens? In the lumen of GIT, there is free fatty acid. Since it is free, it will bind with calcium. It is going to bind with calcium. Which calcium? The calcium which was there for oxalate. Now this calcium is not available for oxalate. So what will happen? There are free oxalate in the lumen. Presence of free oxalate in the lumen. And this free oxalate, it is absorbed in the colon. So this free oxalate, it is going to absorb from the colon. So it is absorbed in colon. And if it is going to absorb in colon, what happens? There is increased risk of stone. Which stone? Oxalate renal stones. So because of this, another problem that these patients are prone to develop oxalate renal stones. Oxalate renal stones. So these patients are prone to develop oxalate renal stones. Clear? If you remember, we were discussing into susception what was the most common type. The most common type was ileocolic. So ileum was going into the colon. Since ileum was going into the colon, what kind of surgery was done? If you remember the surgery, see here, this was the ileum, this was the colon. Ileum was going into the colon and this is what? This is the transverse colon. So the kind of surgery which was done, it was ileocolectomy. Whenever we are performing this ileocolectomy, what kind of anastomosis is done between ileum and transverse colon? So the anastomosis is ileotransverse. Now the problem, you know, here there is presence of one valve. What is the name of this valve? IC valve. Usually IC valve is competent. So there is unidirectional flow of fecal matter from ileum into the cecum. Here, what is the problem? Whenever you perform anastomosis between this transverse colon, and ileum, no IC valve is there. So what will happen? There is free reflux of fecal matter from colon into ileum. And because of that, there is bacterial overgrowth. And because of that, there is diarrhea. This symptom is not seen in all patients. This symptom is seen in the patients where you are going to resect what? You are going to resect, yes, IC junction. So any patient in whom we resect the IC junction, there is bacterial overgrowth and diarrhea. So these two symptoms, what? Bacterial overgrowth, bacterial overgrowth and diarrhea. It is not seen in all patients, bacterial overgrowth and diarrhea. It is seen only in the patient where what is removed? IC junction is removed. Any patient in whom IC junction, ileocecal junction, that's removed. Clear? Another important point, there is a hypothesis which says that catabolism of gastrin occurs in the small bowel mucosa. So if you resect small bowel, what happens now? No catabolism of gastrin or reduced catabolism. And because of that, what happens? These patients are going to develop hypergastrinemia. So another association. These patients are going to develop hypergastrinemia. Got it? So these are the manifestations of short bowel syndrome. Now the problem, since massive resection of small bowel has been done, so in the post-operative period, obviously there is no huge or no adequate absorptive surface area. So how to manage these patients in post-operative period? We give TPN. So in the post-operative period, we have to go for total parenteral nutrition. In the post-operative period, clear, we go for TPN, total parenteral nutrition. What is the preferred vein for TPN? Subclavian vein followed by internal jugular followed by femoral. So for total parental nutrition, what is the preferred vein? It is subclavian vein followed by internal jugular vein followed by femoral vein. Subclavian vein followed by internal jugular vein followed by femoral vein. But what is the treatment of choice? The treatment of choice for short bowel syndrome. So since small bowel is not there, adequate length is not there, put the adequate length of small bowel inside. So what we go for? We go for small bowel transplantation. So treatment of choice, it is small bowel transplantation. Clear? So the treatment of choice is small bowel transplantation. Right? We go for some 
intestinal lengthening procedures are some procedures in which what we perform the surgeries in which there is increased contact period between food stuff and small bowel mucosa now see this procedure this is the whole circumference of bowel what you are going to do you are going to divide the circumference of bowel so what happens you are going to divide the circumference so what happens the circumference of bowel is reduced to half circumference it is reduced to half and what happens you have divided it so see this was the bowel it was divided there was longitudinal division and after that we are going to suture both of these ends so after division when you are going to suture both of these ends what happens the length is doubled so in this case the circumference is reduced to half but length is doubled what is the name of this procedure this is also known as bianchi procedure what is the name this is known as bianchi procedure this is bianchi procedure what is the other name of this bianchi procedure this is also known as lilt this procedure it is also known as lilt so what we are doing here longitudinal intestinal lengthening and tailoring what is done here lilt lilt means longitudinal this is longitudinal intestinal longitudinal intestinal lengthening lengthening and tailoring so longitudinal intestinal lengthening and tailoring this is bianchi procedure so i'm repeating here this is the bowel so what happens the circumference is reduced to half and what happens the length is doubled in this case what is the advantage this procedure is going to increase the contact duration of food with small bowel for longer duration next is step step is serial transverse enteroplasty procedure you can see here what we are doing we are firing multiple staplers can you see here so multiple staplers are fired and when you fire these multiple staplers now how the food is going to travel in this case the food is going to travel in this zigzag manner and since food is going to travel in this zigzag manner what happens it is going to increase the transit time of food into the intestine so in the intestinal lumen it is going to increase the transit time of food and it is going to increase the absorption so this is step serial transverse enteroplasty procedure but the problem these procedures are good but there is increased risk of complications like sometimes there is anastomotic leak so treatment of choice for short bowel syndrome that is small bowel transplantation so this is all about small intestine